go on in the time chamber. Okay. Um, one second. Wait. Save this. I saved this for a while. It's for you people. Are you ready? Oh. I might try to put that back on for the owner so he can get that same joy. It'll never be quite the same. NAD D3020. It's an amplifier. Pasta unboxed it. Link to that unboxing in the description. And it's plugged in quite a bit. C quite a bit. Um, there's a 12 volt trigger. There's a subwoofer out there. I, I have to like look at it, don't I? Do I have to unplug all of this to talk about it? Shit. Alright, well it'll just be more fun to plug it back in. One, two, three. This is the bottom. That's the top. This is the auxiliary inputs. The fiber optic, which is what I'm using from the computer, and then straight from the turntable, because yes, this has a moving magnet for a preamp in it. Uh, it's quite pretty, actually. It's it's very it's very bland. Like that's it. It's like what does it look like? It looks like that. The back of it, however, is quite complex looking. Here's our phono moving magnet inputs with a ground wire, which I do not need for this turntable. We've got three, three and a half millimeters, a subwoofer out, a 12 volt uh, trigger in to turn this on, which I guess is fine, a coaxial uh, digital input, a pre-out, which you could use for powered monitors, should you want to, but that sort of throws away the point of this, optical input, base EQ button, uh, we'll play with that when we get it plugged in, uh, the auxiliary input, your speaker outputs, a service USB, and the power, which is a full-size plug, which means no power brick. Usually something this size would have a power brick. Um, if I'm going to throw this into the category of what is it competing against, $400, at least it should be if you click the link. PS Audio Sprout, if it's available, $600. So, sort of the same ballpark, sort of, of like integrated, and then you got to think about the TAC. What TX do I have? I have the, the 301DA. The 101DA sold, 301DA I have. Bluetooth also built into this. So this competes more with the Sprout because Phono, because we're about to play some vinyl on this bitch. So let's see. Oh, here's your remote control. Again, everything needs to have a remote. Not the worst thing. I kind of, I'm kind of intrigued by the on-off being green and red. Like, I don't know why you'd need that. Uh, source select, mute in the middle, volume up and down, dim and bass, both items you cannot turn on without the remote. And then for Bluetooth control, you have net last track, next track, play, pause, which I've also coded into the Flirk, which is up there so that I can change tracks on the computer and pause as I see fit. So, now that we've looked at the back, and I'm going to have to play with that bass EQ, and then plug something into the subwoofer out to see if it kills the highs in this, let's do that. And you can lay it down. If you notice, it's very, very prone to fingerprints here. I'm going to have to get like nine rags on it. My thing's on the rag. So power first. And then we have, this was the top speaker. Uh, up here on the desk, we have the... These are the Yamo S803s? Yes? You correct me if I'm wrong. God knows I could be wrong all the time. This one is stuck. There we go. These are the Mica speaker cables. Love them. Fucking love them. 14 gauge. No big connector. Just crimped onto that. We're going to go straight in. Let's see, the auxiliary and I had plugged in here. And that was because I was testing, this is the Emotiva XPS-1 Phono preamp. And I was comparing this directly from the turntable to this and then this to the auxiliary versus the Phono preamp built in. And we'll talk about a little bit of that in a second. Two, 
Uh, uh, hold on, I'm gonna do a thing. Zeus doing a thing, Zeus did a thing. There, beautiful fucking Amazon Basics fiber optic cable, because God knows you need that. Plug that in, and then the moving magnet turntable up here. And no ground wire, because there's no ground lead on this particular turbo table, it's the U-turn orbit. Links to everything in the description if I can find it. So now, physical controls on the unit. That's your power indicator there. You press it, it lights up from amber to white. An S shows up, which I couldn't figure out what the S was gonna be. It was like a super bass or super fucking spam. S is source, it's still blinking the front. Wait for it. And there we are. So now, source. So the front panel shows optical, coax, auxiliary, moving magnet, Bluetooth, and back to optical. That's it. No USB. I'm fine with no USB. Most computers have an optical. That's what we're going to be using. If we have music playing, which we do, we turn this up. Is it because my life is ten shades of How do I start the problem? There's a couple problems with this. It's not like, oh my god, NAD gear, I fell in love with it immediately. This is sort of like what they've done to sort of get into the home. Dim. So you get this, this giant front panel display, right? Which, if I hit bass, bass boost comes on, bass sets there. Shut off bass. If I hit dim, pause that for a second. If I hit dim, it dims the front panel. But it doesn't shut it off. And that kills me a little bit because it's so strikingly pretty but when you hit dim okay it dims it but if you hit dim again it doesn't shut it off it should just just keep going it should be a third step there Ned, just 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 give me give me the off you're not giving me the off so I'll leave it on full because why not the only time that shuts off is when you shut the whole unit off then it's plain black monolith very sexy turn it back on it takes a second. So here you go. It Turning it off, off, it won't shut it off. It's caught in its cycles of on and off. One of my issues is when you turn it on, if it's away from you in a room, like since it has a remote, and since it has fiber optic input, and since it's a speaker amp, you could use this for your home theater, or your 2.1 home theater, because that's a subwoofer out. If the power indicator's in the top, and you're far away from it, this is what has to tell you it's on. So when you turn it off, it's off. The top goes to amber. But when you turn it on, wait for it, hold on, on, that's lit up, nothing here. Just blackness, and then it comes on. And then it flashes to tell you it's getting things ready internally, and then eventually it'll stop flashing, and then you'll be on, eventually. There, okay. That's actually a pretty long warm up time for a solid state amp. Now, we have to talk about my biggest pet peeve with the usability of this. So you get power, you get source, you get a volume knob. It's just a knob, it's just a knob. And the indicator is here, it says minimum, says maximum, and you turn it. And as you turn it, the, dart, the dots get brighter and brighter and brighter. The next one lights up and the next one lights up and the next one lights up. We've got how many dots here? Four, eight. The first three dots, absolutely useless. They may as well be mute here. Let's put on, let's put on the brightest setting of the third dot. That could be radio interference. It's so quiet. So okay. So what about the fourth dot? Let's do the fourth dot. Okay. Well, it was definitely music playing. That's four dots. That's four dots. That's 50% of the visible range of volume is now on. Okay. Five dots. Six dots. It's so loud about a seventh dot you can't listen to it. So it's a range problem. I would love for it to be barely audible at one, then two, then three, then maybe four or five out of eight is like listenable volume and then everything about that is high. Mm, no. So you get the volume control on this, if you're not turning the knob, you hold it. If you tap it 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21. It, it's like 20 presses to get the volume to light up another fucking dot. So it's very finite controls. It's just so super slow. It's nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, it's getting there. And then, and I, I have not found a time when this isn't the case, going to the eighth dot is immediately distortion. I mean, it's loud. Eighth dot is loud. Now, these speakers are okay to power. They're not the hardest to drive, not the easiest. But there's also a headphone out. And I've got some headphones here. And let me tell you, if you push them, if you're willing to go loud enough, going past seven dots, which is very easy to do on my fucking Mr. Speaker E through Flow C's, E through C flows, distortion. And it's just an immediacy. But as soon as that last dot lights up at all, it's like it kicks it into overdrive and doesn't give a flying fuck about total harmonic distortion or anything. So, bad nad, bad nad. Get the volume straightened out on a version three of this so that it's it actually is a linear. I want linear. It's like a super exponential rise to fucking death. I don't mind the source thing on top. I don't mind the power thing on top. I wish it would turn on and then indicate in the front immediately. Maybe a ring around here. Maybe, I mean, I know this is digital and just spins forever, but you could you could work something out. I'm sure you guys are smart. It's not the prettiest with the, with the fascia on. Now, the bass boost. The bass boost is weird. I don't hate it. It actually is rather plain, Jane. Let's put this up. Get another song on. Bass boost is on. It actually brings up a lot of mid bass. It doesn't bring up just low, low, low. Now I'm going to press that bass adjustment in the back. I'm going to try to do this while not playing music quite a lot. And i got to reach now. I'm going to use the 35 millimeter on this. So we're going to unpause. Oh, that just turns that on. I was confused for fuck's sake. So, so basically, I, I said earlier that the bass boost is not adjustable on the unit. You have to have the remote. No, it totally is. You got to reach into the back and touch a fucking recessed pin button to get bass EQ to come on and off. I, I was sitting here because that was the last thing I hadn't tested. I was thinking that I was going to maybe change the EQ curve a little bit. Like it would maybe just sub bass. Like that's what it should do. It should be okay just, first of all, that's an inaccessible button. That's like factory reset level button press. Stupid. I was hoping it would have different types of bass boost. Bass one, bass two, bass three. And you could pick and choose. Doesn't have that. Moving on. So you still can't dim the front panel unless there's another hidden button somewhere that just says, you know, dim adjust and it just dims the, dims the panel. It's only 40 watts a channel. It's not even close to the power of the Sprite 100. The Sprite 100 is 100 watts per channel. Now, anyone knows anything about how watts work, uh, when you double the wattage, so 40 to 80, you get three more decibels. So the fact that the other one could do like 100, is like four more decibels. It's like a range, it's not that much, but it's enough. It's called headroom. These speakers might need 33 watts of power to really explode, and pushing them that little bit more is just distortion. You never want to use an amp to its full potential. That's why my living room amplifiers, those crowns I have in there, 8 ohms, they're 1500 watts a channel. Because I never want to get there. I want those things that push 4, 450, 500 watts and be like, the fans don't even come on. Eh. You want more power not because your speakers need it, you want more power because you don't want to need to use it. I have 500 horsepower in my Caprice. Do you think I need that to enter the highway? No. But let me tell you, when I'm getting cut off by a truck and I need to either stop or go, at least I have the option to go. These speakers, when you push them real hard and the bass note hits like that, at only 40 watts, it doesn't really have the option to go. Now, that's me, and that's me playing certain music, and that's me complaining about it. Let's talk about the headphone out. I don't mind the... So anything else? I've got to put on some vinyl before we talk about the headphone out. Right? Clicky click. Get that spun up. Switch the source. 
drop the hammer. By the way, that's Josie Horikawa's Vapor. We got some rain. Thunder. I want to fast forward, but I can't. You can mute also on the remote and not on the unit. This doesn't push in, this doesn't wiggle up. Well, if you mute it and then you turn the knob, it on mutes. I don't know if the moving magnet phono pre in this is as good as a separate phono pre for this reason. I was listening to it, and I don't think you could hear it on. I don't think we could hear it on speakers, but let's plug in a set of headphones. And which headphones do I have now? We're hooked up to those, fine. As soon as you plug in the three and a half millimeter, and it should be a quarter inch, and I'm just gonna complain always because fuck three and a half millimeter. It's too non robust. I'm taking it, by the way, all the way up to seven dots full. I do not want the eighth dot to light up. Listen to the vinyl. But now let's lift this up. Yeah, it's still there. There's a very faint, like mechanical sounding popping in the left channel. And it's not the turntable. If I turn the turntable off, it's not that. It's got something to do with just the phono preamp in this, because if I run the Emotiva through it, through the auxiliary, if I unplug it there and plug it here, there is no popping. So it's something internal is causing just the most faint, like you'll never hear it. I'm just saying it's there, I'm just telling you that it's there, but you'll never hear it. Let's put that back down. Actually, I should skip to a song that actually has sound. See, I, it doesn't have enough oomph to push my fucking ether C flows. Also, shared volume control on the headphones. That's no good, because these are really hard to drive headphones, and I pushed it up to near eight, and then I unplugged them, and luckily the song was ending, or those speakers would have fucking been lit. Aff. Lit aff. That's maximum volume. Absolute maximum volume. I know there's a thing that's coming. Hold on. Good separation. And these are very good speakers, by the way, to test this with. Now, if you go fast, I just turn that twice, and it's zero, zero dots. If you turn it fast, it goes fast. If you turn it slow... It feels like it goes slower near the top and faster at the bottom. Then why even include the bottom? Why include the bottom three or four lights? Just give me nothing, nothing, and then give me sound. I'm being real mean to this NAD. This is gonna, this is a solution to a lot of people's, like, oh, I need this, again, 8018 for my living room. Uh, there was that other fucking topping one for the lid. There's just so many Oh no, it was the Sabaj. There's so many little, cute, baby amplifiers with remote controls and fiber optic. These just happened, to, this is a brand, NAD is a brand, and it has a phono preamp in it. So that's, it's, it's also prettier than the, uh, the SMSL of the Sabaj. Just saying that. I, I have, I'm allowed to have my opinion. Bluetooth, I don't have anything hooked up right now. It actually used to work to my phone and my phone decided to tell it to fuck off. But uh, when it is on your phone, you can use these buttons to hit next track, last track. Very, very convenient. Convenient. Do want. However, these buttons on Bluetooth is fine. They don't work on the computer because it's not USB and it doesn't have a thing. So go get a Flirk. Link in the description for $22 and you can go and hold on, let me switch the source. How loud are we playing? Or paused. All right, next track. See that? That's super convenient. Set your media keys. All right, me 
mute. Mute this. Or the whole bar flashes. There's not much else. Is, as complicated, as much as there should be to say about this. Oh, it's going to be another 40 minute review by Zeos. There's not that much to say about it. If you're under the, the threshold of it peaking the amp, it's clean. It's clear. It's only 0.1% distortion. Here, let's go to the actual. Let's go to the videotape. Yeah, it's THD is, I'm sorry, 0 0.01 at 1 watt, which is it's 40 watts. So that means it's higher distortion above that. Signal to, signal to noise, 98 decibels. And then continuous output power of a 0.1 THD, both tra channels driven. So it's, I mean, it shouldn't distort as badly as it does, but I've taken this thing to the maximum and it will distort. If you have one, tell me if it doesn't. If you're just a normal user and you're not a hard hardcore user, tell me what it does. Oh, look what's in the description right here. So right there is the 8018, which is $144. And this is $400. And now the PS Audio Sprout, by the way, is currently unavailable. And we got to talk about the headphone out because that's that's if you're getting one of these and you're not putting it in your living room you're putting it on your desk like i've got a desk here so we plug the headphones in. let's plug more headphones in let's plug headphones that are easier to drive in i also don't like the fact that when you mute it and turn it down she unmutes good units really good units you mute them and you turn it up and it unmutes and turn it down and just lets you lower the volume and then you could turn it up so these are the uh z7s 7Zs, Z7 Mark IIs, mmm, what a fucking comfortable set of headphones, and not that hard to drive, although, maxing out six dots, just touching seven, not bad, not bad, I have a lot of weird little issues, whoa, okay, we're, we're backing it down to like mid six. Juno reactor, which you can't hear now, but it's nitrogen part two. I don't hate this for a headphone amp. For 400 bucks, you get a DAC, a Phono Pre, a Bluetooth receiver, a fucking speaker amplifier, and a headphone amplifier. A decent headphone amplifier. Not the greatest headphone amplifier, but it's a decent one. These are like seven or nine hundred dollar fucking headphones, and I'm listening to them, and I'm okay with the way they sound. I know if I plugged them into something else or my stack over there, it would be there might be a little bit more to it. I got an Audio God product in here. It, mm. But for what it is, and it's probably using these the mains to power it. It's not terrible. It's just not. It's not terrible. That's the best praise I can give to the headphone amplifier on this. Let me plug in the, uh, one more headphone. Wait. Did, oh my god, there's a knot. One more headphone. But I don't have any one more headphones. Because there's, that's a great marketing ploy. Can we just have one more head, headphone? Alright. Ready? Turn this up. So these are really easy to drive. These are the 660s. And they're really transparent. These are not like Sony's where it's allowed, and they're not so hard to drive that I can't judge it. So 660s on this. Absolutely fine. Now, bass boost. Works on the headphone amp. There's no EQ. But the 818, those things have EQs and fucking treble and bass. It's just bass boost. No bass boost. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a purist. I'd leave it off almost all the time. If you're playing a game, maybe you throw a little bit on there. But don't get used to that artificial bass boost. You don't want to end up like that guy. You know that guy that's just like, oh, I heard that the loudness button makes everything better, so I made everything better all the time. Don't do that. I like this thing. I like it. I don't love it. The PS Audio Sprout... I loved that thing because it was an extremely good headphone amplifier. Could power all of these with no problem. Where this is sort of like entry level. Uh, the moving magnet uh, preamp is good. An audible difference between that and a completely separate one. Well, there's certainly a lower noise floor with a separate one. 
And I do also have to put it up. Hold on, we'll go to a... Uh, there. Like, up. Like, if you want to play vinyl loud through this onto speakers, you're going to hit seven. You're going to hit seven dots out of eight. Which means the next stop is fucking full-blown distortion. If you could just hear it ramp up like way, like a plus six decibels beyond where it should be. And it's just, mmm, it needs a little more power. If this was 80 watts a channel, you'd be fine, because if I'm pushing it to 40 and it's distorting, then if it was 80 watts a channel, I'd push it to 40, 50, 55, and it would be enough, and you wouldn't distort, because you wouldn't be getting near the actual limit. I wish I had a little more power. It has decent amounts of inputs. Auxiliary is great. Who doesn't need a, at least an RCA? Um, we should actually test. Where's the wire I was going to test? I'm just going to see one thing real quick before we move on. I need something bassy. I need something not turntable. You're going to be okay? Needs more things plugged into it. See, it didn't do anything. Because I have a subwoofer down there and I was going to hook it up for this test, but there's no reason to. The subwoofer out on this doesn't remove frequencies from the speaker out. And that's a problem. Because the whole point of adding a subwoofer to a system, like when you get the Vanitu, the little Vanitu T1s, or the, the new T1 Encores or the T0s, when you plug a subwoofer into it, it says, okay, I, my small speaker self, do no longer need to deal with 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, whatever it is, whatever the cutoff is, it removes those frequencies from the speaker and passes them along to the sub. And that allows the speakers to play without distortion to a higher volume. Since I just plug this in to the subwoofer out and it didn't change anything, listen. But it, it doesn't know there's no subwoofer. It doesn't know this isn't a subwoofer. Since it doesn't change anything, all it's doing is taking the left and right channel information, blending it into mono, and shoving it out the back and saying, hook a subwoofer up to me. Which is nice that it offers it, but from NAD, for, for, yeah, I kind of wanted to, I kind of wanted to do that thing that it should be doing, and it's not doing that thing that it should be doing. It really should be doing that thing that it's it's not doing. So, and then there's line out, which is just line out, which I'm not even going to play with it. Because I mean, if you had powered monitors, why are you buying this? Because the DAC is good. Like, look, you're paying four hundred dollars. A shit stack is 200 and something dollars. And then if you wanted a speaker ramp, you're gonna pay another $100, or actually more like $70 to get like an SMSL. Then you want a phono pre, and you can get a cheap one for 30 bucks. That's fine, then you need a Bluetooth module. So imagine the pile of shit you'd have, and the wiring disaster, and then you'd have to get like a switch box to switch between things. So this is just convenient. It's good enough and convenient. That's, that's as far as I'll take it. I'm not gonna suck this thing's dick. I love you. NAD the company, no one will ever say bad things about NAD. And I'm not saying anything's bad about it. I'm saying they price themselves to a point where it's like a Swiss Army knife. Everything is good enough, but nothing is great. Okay, good with that? You like that? Good. This is going back to its owner. That wallpaper, those thighs, are in the description if you'd like to download them. Um, if you'd like all the wallpapers I've ever put here, by the way, you join my Patreon for $2 a month and I have a special folder you can have access to. Um, $10 a month patrons get into a special place. $5 a month patrons go to the yard sale. And obviously everyone above them. I'll link this. I'll link the, the PS Audio Sprout. I'll link a couple other alternatives also for this. Ha nah, I'm not going to link the whole pile. Imagine the pile of things required to, to make this happen. It's, it, it's bad. It's one of those, like, I wish this was, like, I love when the product is, like, a solve-all. Like, the, the PS Audio Sprout. You got it, and you didn't need to buy anything else for a headphone amp, because it was damn good. The DAC in it was damn good. The little bass boost it had, you had to turn it off by default. It's a sneaky, sneaky. 
But yeah, and the Phono, the Phono Pre didn't have any problems with that. This one, I actually pulled out a different Phono Pre to just compare and contrast. So if I'm doing that, that means I've heard something that something's not quite right. That little, little like, repetitive sound that it wasn't part of the mechanicals of this. It needs a little bit of improvement. Nad can do it. Nad can probably add $100 to the cost of this and fix everything I'm talking about. But until they do, I'm going to recommend it. This is the cheapest all-in-one right now I could think of that has everything I live. Phono and Bluetooth and fiber optic and a remote control and at least enough power to... 40 watts is just... The fucking line. If it was 20 watts, it would be like, nah, don't even fucking bother. 40 watts, I'll give it a pass. Again, thighs in the description, links to things in the description, links to the Patreon and down there and up in the upper right hand corner. <sighs> Sorry, Nad, but I'm sick. Okay, moving on.